Okay. Hello, please, uh, uh, please begin. Yes. 
and blue line, the blue line, um, is that end line and show, show that and that this line show the trend of um, those like, those countries, and the red line is from zero to ten, and this is and this line has no bias. And since the blue line is under the red line, um, we can like, I can tell that like, those European countries tend to value um, democracy and civil liberties more than function, functioning of government or political participation. And on the other hand, in in sub-Saharan Africa and Middle East and North Africa. Um, the graph shows more countries tend to be um, on the bottom left hand side. So um, that suggests that those countries have poor scores for democracy and civil liberties and political participation and functioning of government. So in Sub Saharan Africa, by looking at the lines, like for the comparison of democracy, civil liberties, and is in functioning of government, the trend line, the blue line, um, is under the red line. So just like European countries, the democracy and civil liberties is more valued than functioning of government. However, when I compare to democracy and civil liberties with political participation, um, some countries are above the red line, above the red line. Um, and that means they have more political, like they, um, they, those countries value political participation more than democracy and civil liberties. And for the Middle East and North Africa, since blue line is close to red line, so it seems more balanced, but by looking at the graph on the left hand side, there are some countries that have a like, useless government. I mean, like um, the functioning of government are zero, and this, um, I think this is because this area tends to be politically unstable and most of them have authorities, so I think that's why. And for the, the Asian countries, it's quite balanced. It looks like it's quite balanced, especially for the um, functioning of government and um, democracy civil liberties index. And for the democracy civil liberties index with political participation, <coughs> the countries tend to value more democracy civil liberties than um, political participation. And for Western Hemisphere, they value more um, democracy civil liberties than the government function and political participation. And finally, for the Comecon countries, which are the former members of Soviet Union, um, the democracy civil liberties is more valued, but political participation tends to be valued as well because the blue line crosses the red line and there are um, some countries um, which are above the red line. So the world overall tends to value more on democracy and civil liberties than other, um, any other variables. However, there are some countries that they value other variables more, or countries that they have balanced scores. And now I would like to go over by, by I would like to like, focus on some religions and go by by um, religion and some countries. So the first one is Western Europe. So by looking at the graph, again, blue line is under the red line, so it means and those countries to value more democracy and civil liberties than functioning of government. <coughs> and the one which has lowest functioning of government is Greece. Um, so this, the lower score of functioning of government must be the result of functioning, hmm? must be the result of financial scandal. And um, I think most of you may know, but um, the government was in a huge trouble. And the, in, in 2008, the score for the functioning of government in Greece was um, over seven, so it dropped by more than 1.1, so maybe that's why. Right. And unlike the others, some countries are above the red line, which means um, they tend to value functioning of government more than democracy and civil liberties. And that one of the country is Belgium. 
Um, so when I look at this country, Beijing, so despite of high scores for the for the other variables like functioning of government, it has um, lower political participation rate, which is just over five. So, so compared to the data from 2008, the political participation has de decreased by more than one, like 1.11. And this, I think this might be the result of increased number of immigrants. And at the moment, about 20% of population is foreigners. And apart from EU countries, uh, many of them are from Morocco. Morocco, Turkey, and Congo. And the presence of those minority people in society has been causing a serious problem of their incorporations into the politics. And also, like, they have voting rights, so they can vote, but hardly any party makes special effort to include minorities into the politics. <coughs> so um, those minority people are not willing to participate in politics. So that could be why. And Norway? With, like, with perfect score, with, perf with first place in the world, has sixth largest GDP per capita. And it provides high social welfare system and life certification that people feel is the first place in the world. And women has equal chance to work in the society as well. So those things tell me that the government works really well. And, more, and also, it has high voting rate among all generations, from young youth to um, adult. And also economically, the Norway is a big oil ex exporter, so obviously it must be wealthy. So when I look at the GDP per capita for each, each country in Europe, the most of the country tend to be wealthy with high um, GDP, like Australia, France, Germany, Italy, and Spain. Um, so when I look at the Iceland, Iceland, it has high democracy index with second place in the world. The Iceland is called a country with least corruption. So the president is elected by direct voting from citizens, and um, he's just for like, representatives and does not have any political power. And the government officials are also elected by um, direct vote from citizens. So yeah, and also like there are so many um, sectors in the government, like innovation sector, economical sector, education, natural resources, social welfare, and so on. And that means the government works very well. And however, Greece um, lacks in the 48 in GDP per capita, which is the lowest in, um, in, the, in the Europe. Yeah, and as I mentioned earlier, the Greece has lowest Greece has lower variables than other countries. So when I look at the, um, when I look at countries in Western Europe, it suggests that the countries with higher GDP tends to be more democratic and tend to have better political and economic system. And to make this result more stronger, I would like to look at the other areas like coming from countries. So the dots, the countries on the graph for Comecon countries are more widely distributed compared to the ones in Europe. So it can be said that the countries are not that similar and um, the situation differs from country to country, I think. And by looking at the graph, the, country can be, um, the countries can be divided into three groups. The group one includes North Korea, Uzbekistan, Turkmenistan, Tark and Tajikistan. And the dots for those four countries are in the bottom on the left hand side, and which means that, that they have lower variables than those countries. And they all have authorities that and they tend to have very low civil liberties with zero or under one. And geographically, Uzbekistan, Turkmenistan, and Tajikistan tends to be uh, and geographically those three countries are located closely to each other. And what I thought interesting was looking at this graph, like, um, so despite of low scores, um, political participation is relatively high compared to democracy civil liberties index, and it suggests that, however, they do not have much freedom, they think participating in politics is important. And 
and in fact in Turkmenistan even political system is centralized the election is for everyone and the polling rate is high with around like 80 percent so I, I think relatively higher political participation reflect this result so uh, North Korea is quite is a kind of like a player and different from those three countries and its variable are very low and the people have no freedom as the index for um, democracy and civil liberties is just above 0 0.5 and the reason could be that the uh, Kim family um, has too strong power and controls everything so the people do not have power, um, freedom and in the middle group um, 11 countries belong in this group like Georgia, Azerbaijan, Kazakhstan, Vietnam, Russia, and Cuba, and Bos Bosnia and ha Herzegovina. So by looking at the data, I noticed that, however, Bosnia and ha Herzegovina, Bosnia and Herzegovina is one country, have low scores for functioning of government. Um, I want to government. They tend to have high democracy and civil parties, which is um, close to six and in, in this country the people have more freedom in fact um, there are people from various races and living in the country and they were allowed to get married with people from different places and also they have freedom of um, speech and like doing cultural activities freely and in the high group in which the dots of the countries are in the top right corner um, the countries like Albania, um, Hungary, Estonia, Latvia, Lithuania, and Montenegro belong in that group, and they have higher scores for each variables. Um, so, so it shows that like um, the each variables and the ones in the character and democracy, and this is very small. So. To sum up what I found, so comparing GDP per capita of three different groups in Comecon area, um, that I noticed that the group with low variables tend to land in the lower than um, other two groups, two other groups, and for the middle group, the poor countries and relatively richer countries tend to be mixed together, and for the group with higher index, that most of them are richer than two groups and it suggests that the um, higher the democracy the better the economy and lower the democracy the poorer the economy so in Asia the dots seem to be the more spread and more countries and, but more countries need to um, have higher variables so but, um, yeah. But the democracy and civil parties are more valued than political participation in this graph. So when I look at Papua New Guinea, um, despite of higher, despite of a high democracy and civil liberties index, which is um, which is over seven, the political participation is very low, which is um, under the four, under four, and in 2008 it was just above four, so it has been uh, low for many years. And the reason could be that the women's participation to politics is very low, and they do not have any chance to be politicians, and also like they don't have chance to influence politics. So and it has been like one of the very serious problems in this country, and also um, it, I'm not sure if it's related to this or not, but um, in some areas, women get to be killed if they were recognized as rich, um, majority in Japanese. So I think the country has severe cultural problem that women's, um, like women's position is very low. So that, that could be why. So China is, China um, is quite different from 
from other countries, and um, it has low democracy and civil liberties than functioning of government. I wonder why China has been growing economically despite of the low democracy and civil, civil score. So when I look at the GDP per capita, it ranks in seven, 70s, which is like in the middle in the world, and its economic has been growing by 6.9 in 2017. And until a few years ago, um, the government used to control everything, and I mean, like, it used to have the socialism and planned economic. But now, however, the like natural resources and some big um, chemical factors are owned by public companies, the like more private sector has been um, producing money, more money. And now, um, its economic system is called a mix of socialism and capitalism. However, its very low um, democracy and civil liberties index is very serious problem. And in China, the patent or property right um, is very weak and it does not protect people. And also, the um, people are forbidden some activities on the internet to prevent having criticism or a bad opinion about the government. So those things must reflect Chinese amount um, score of democracy and civil liberties. So to conclude what I talked, so by looking at some religions and countries closely, the countries with higher scores tend to be economically wealthy, and countries with lower scores tend to be economically poor. And also, there are economical and political reasons that reflect each variables, each scores. So to answer my question, there is a relationship between democracy and civil liberties, and political and economical system that each country has. However, there are some differences among religions, or also uh, and also within the religions, like Greece, China, and Bosnia. So it was very interesting for me to know that and to think why it is happening and why it has been happening. So in this presentation, I focused only like mainly on three religions. So I would like to look at the other areas as well to make my knowledge more deeper. Thank you for listening. Um, well, we'll open the uh, we'll open the floor. Uh, let's see. You took you twenty two minutes. Um, well, uh, the uh, I, I think you could spend a little bit more time in a little bit of detail. So let's. Uh, what I think I'd, uh, I'd like to do is go back over, over some of. Uh, some of the, 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 the presentation and talk. If we can go back to, let's see, let me, let's check my notes here. Um, I'll just, uh, let's go back to the, the, the start. Let's go back to page seven. Uh, the first question about page seven. Um, and an important point, it's, it's region. It, you, you want to say, I think you want to say region and not religion. Yeah, really yeah, be careful. Re, 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 I mean, there could be differences in religion, and certainly religion would have to do, um, you know, I, I wasn't 100% I, I wasn't sure, um, but I think, you, I think you're interested in region and not, not, not religion. Um, okay, now let's see here. Uh, let's see, we have, right, uh, I noticed how, uh, you, you, you've noticed how for, for Sub-Saharan Africa, it's basically below, uh, what, what country is, uh, do you know which country has the, the high functioning government and, and low democracy, that, that one at the top there? One of the things I'd like to do here is talk, let's talk about some of these individual countries and, and see, um, even in Sub-Saharan uh, sub Africa, uh, there, there are differences. So if, um, although it's harder, like, for example, let, let's let's think first about those countries near. Um, let's think about this country here. For example, do you know which country uh, that is? No, I didn't you know? focus on this. Okay. Do you have any idea which countries? I would suspect this is Southern Africa. Mm -hmm. I would suspect that's probably um, uh, that, that's probably South Africa. Mm -hmm. South Africa. That I would imagine that South Africa, um, mm -hmm. uh, uh, Botswana, uh, Botswana. Um, 
Namibia, mm -hmm. and maybe um, you could have Ghana. Ghana could be somewhere. Ghana, Ghana could be up there uh, as well. It, it, it could be. It could be less. Of, it, I don't know if it'd be less at all. You want to check that because that. Yeah. But, but it would be interesting to see. You know what? What a little bit deeper. Um, and as I say, uh, the the other thing I noticed was if you notice the. Um, uh, go to the uh, Asia. Go to Asia. Yeah. Now see how similar. The, the, actually, the go back to Asia and then go back and forth between seven and eight. Let's see. Do you see how the? Okay. Actually, I, I thought it was more similar, but it, let me go back again. Okay. Let's see. Your the 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 chart six is similar. Let's, mm -hmm. Yeah, that one. You see that? Yeah, that that. Uh, the slope of that line is, is similar, but in Asia you have more, uh, it's, it's more towards the higher, uh, the, the, the higher end. Go back to Africa again. Yeah, I, it, it, the slope is similar. Now I'm wondering if part of that, see, if you, if you look at this, like here it's clustered here. Yes. Um, whereas, go, go, go to Africa, Asia, watch. But the slope is similar. So I would be, it'd be interesting to see if as the African countries, um, if the Af as the African countries become more uh, wealthy, if they start moving up up this line, that might be something uh, something interesting. Um, let's see. I wanted also to talk. Okay, the Comic Con that was very interesting. Uh, I, I thought that was a very interesting. Um, oh well, let's go back to Middle East because the Middle East is. Uh, 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 do you see? Yeah. It, do you notice how the, the uh, there's a lot of these countries, even though the trend line, this is one of the problems with the trend line. See that line, there's actually, the, most of the countries are above it. Mm -hmm. So these are really, these are some very different, uh, these are kind of very different. Do, do you know which, which countries these, uh, the, 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 the difference here? Again, it's one of the things that I've noticed, we, there's definitely seems to be a relationship between government functioning and GDP. Go, go back and look at that. Because there's definitely, a, a, there seems to be a definite relationship between functioning of government. I was looking at your numbers, and that seems like, like functioning of government and GDP. I would guess that these are low GDP, and these are higher uh, GDP. And if that's the case, then you're talking about, uh, you know, maybe countries like Jordan. Mm -hmm. um, so I, uh, Saudi Arabia might be somewhere up here. This this might be Saudi Arabia. Now, yeah, I think Saudi Arabia is somewhere mm -hmm. somewhere here. Uh, I I would think um, I would think countries like Jordan, uh, uh, maybe Iran. Mm -hmm. Maybe Iran, um, you know, countries like Yemen, probably down here. Yemen, um, uh, maybe, yeah, that'd be interesting to see. Or you probably Somalia. Is Somalia even on the? Was Somalia a part of? Where is Somalia? Sub-Saharan? Do you remember? You don't. Um, I don't. Okay. Okay. Um, okay. Let me also look. Check the time. We still have uh, ten minutes. The um, Belgium is very interesting. Let's go to uh, Belgium. Uh, yeah, you you you've noticed, and I know you did your last semester. You did on Greece, so you you have a lot of interest in in Greece. So what's interesting about Greece is the uh, of, of course Greece was the where democracy, the uh, the beginnings of democracy. Uh, come come from Greece, and that's more than three thousand years ago. Three thousand five hundred years ago, three thousand to three thousand five hundred years ago for Greece. So that's historically, uh, uh, that's that's that. I, and I thought your your uh, your thesis about Belgium is is interesting. Mm -hmm. That's interesting about democracy, civil civil liberties, functioning of government, and and what whether there's an impact on. On, on immigration, yes. uh, what what the impact of immigration is there? Because that's 
uh, yeah, and that especially especially here, yeah, that that was um, that is very that is very interesting. Um, I'm, do you know where uh, do you, do you know where uh, the Netherlands? Do, do you have in your data? Do you have your what do you, you yes, yes, see if we can we can see? And I I say that because um, no, I think it's interesting you, you you pointing this out because this is one of the issues uh, in um, you know. Yes, nice putties. Um, so, so Belgium, yeah, uh, Belgium also is, um, and we, we uh, one of the things we'll talk about, uh, and, um, and, and and this is uh, 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 more for your uh, presentation, talking about regions within in countries. And I mentioned uh, 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 Ricky's uh, presentation. He's going to talk about Spain, but it's really also Belgium is, is similar in that there's very different regions and, and very different cultures. But you also, as you know, you do have uh, also a quite quite a large amount of, of, of immigration. Yes. Um, so uh, yeah, that would be interesting to see where because some of the same tension, some of the same tension is, is exists in, in the Netherlands. From immigration, there's 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 some of that, and where what's interesting because Germany, on the other hand, which has quite a bit of immigration, which has had a lot of immigration, mm -hmm. I, my guess is it's it's uh, that Germany is uh, is somewhere is somewhere up 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 here is some is is much higher, um, but I think that's because the the immigrants there tend to be from from Turkey, and 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 I think that the yeah. Well, there's uh, in you know, there's certainly some, yes. but 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 uh, Turkish immigrants have been going to, to Germany for a long time, for 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 some decades. You know, they've been going for some decades. Um, let's see, let's see how much time we have. I wanted to take about. We still have some few minutes. If anybody wants to jump up and ask a question, don't restrain yourself. <laughs> yes. Yes. Uh, sorry, you already. Uh, Mentioned, but uh, I have uh, I want to ask two questions. Okay. And is there a relationship? Uh, uh, or, uh, no. uh, there's a indicator of the functioning of government. Uh, those countries that uh, which uh, have the higher uh, functioning of government, right? it's uh, social socialist. Socialism. Uh, no, not only. Like China was a very uh, tend to have the socialism uh, government have the very the uh, have a right. lot of the uh, so uh, healthcare or right something. right High, uh, the, the the in terms of functioning of government and and socialist systems Socialism. right um yes. you, you know what the uh, 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 go ahead yes I, because like the countries like Norway has um, like so many as I mentioned like so many sectors like. Uh, um, innovation sectors and education and those, you know. So I think there is an extreme relationship between like those, you know, um, government function and the scores of functioning government. Mm -hmm. um, and I think the interesting, uh, his your question is more to the point of. Um, uh, it, when you say socialist, um, in Norway, as an example, is a socialist. Is, it has a very socialist system. It's quite socialist, um, uh, uh, but it's a different socialism from the socialism that in China, for example. Certainly, um, I, I would certainly Norway is a so, is a socialist system, but China is a socialist. But but it, but I think you're talking about the Chinese, China or Cuba. Countries like that, with, with with fairly good functioning, I mean, Cuba has very good health care, uh, for example, um, um, but very low civil liberties. Um, and I think that's his his your question is more along those countries, those kinds of uh, of countries that are somewhat authoritarian, mm -hmm. but are well organized. Um, some countries are, are authoritarian, like which countries are authoritarian but not well organized. And which, in other words, uh, countries that just don't function very well, and and so and socialist countries like China that function well, um, but have low uh, 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 democracy. Um, uh, yes. Uh, who, who decides that such uh, indicators? 
you think the mm. oil waste? Yeah, very good question. You know. It's from like, I don't, I don't remember the exact name, but I think mm. it was like Bar something. Right, the, yeah, the, the Economist. Maybe. Yeah. Did, did you mention that? You, you should make sure you mention yeah, that. Yeah, I, yeah, uh, that it, it, it's from it, uh, the the index uh, comes from uh, the Economist magazine, uh, the Democracy Index. Is uh, the, the, these these indices come from uh, are, are are made by the the uh, Econ uh, Economist Intelligent uh, Unit, the EIU. The yeah, yes, yes. Right, it's the Economist Intelligent Unit. Yes. Make sure you make. Though that's a kind of point. Yeah. Very good question. That's the source of that. Make sure when you make a presentation like this in the future. That's very important. Uh, it's from the uh, the Economist Intelligent Unit. Do, do you know what that is? It, it, it's related to the Economist magazine. Economist magazine of yes. uh, uh, of UK. UK. Right, the UK Economist magazine. They have. Uh, it's basically like a consulting group uh, within uh, as as part of the magazine, uh, where they do kind of consulting, uh, and it, and and part of that is assessments uh, of political. An economic assessment, uh, consulting, uh, and and that's that's what the economic uh, intelligent unit, the economist intelligent unit is. So they put out, they they put out this. So one of the important things, uh, and and I know this is, uh, um, uh, it is the uh, uh, there is some, the the question is how much of this it, these scores are biased towards the perception. It's London-based. You know, it's Western Europe. All the Western Europe countries get graded high, of course. So they're grading a, um, but uh, uh, so to what degree uh, uh, is that uh, an, an, an impact? Um, uh, I thought the particularly in Africa that it's a bit biased, the, uh, depending on the relationship between the UK. Yeah, that's an interesting. That's a, uh, in fact that that would be uh, if you wanted to look at that. Let's go to in fact go to Af uh, the uh, uh, Sub-Saharan Africa because Sub-Saharan Africa has very close relationships. Um, Sub-Saharan Africa. Let's see. That's page seven. Yeah, that's page seven. Right. Um, yeah, I think your 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 question is. Uh, you know, to what degree, uh, like these, these countries are former British colonies. Um, these are, are tend to be probably the high scores tend. To, that's what I South Africa, mm. or, or or part of the British Commonwealth, South Africa, uh, Namibia. But well, Namibia was uh, German, but there, there's there's a British influence. Uh, well, there's more of a German influence in Namibia, but Botswana mm -hmm. is very, very uh, 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 English in influence. But also for Ghana, Ghana is also, and that's that's why it'd be interesting to see where Ghana. Uh, did, did, were you able to find the number for for Ghana? No. Okay. Um, the other thing. Um, no, some very good questions. Yeah, very good questions. Thank you. Um, the. Um, I wanted to talk about, um, ask you about, oh, um, see the Comic-Con, yeah, that was interesting. Go back to the, the low scoring. The, the one thing is, uh, the, the thing, what, what we're calling the Comic-Con are, um, it's related to this former Soviet Union or countries, Bos Bosnia was part of the former Yugoslavia. So remember, it, they, they, it, what, it, it, it's, Related to Comic Con, but not as closely uh, tied. But they were. It was because Yugoslavia was aligned with Russia, and that's the same thing for uh, for North Korea. The North, that these were uh, countries that were aligned with uh, Vietnam. So Vietnam is is, is in the same category. Um, what interesting thing about uh, uh, you, you you mentioned of of course remember they did have that terrible civil war uh, 25 years ago. Uh, it, uh, the, the civil war in, in Bosnia was a, was a terrible uh, event, and it certainly Bosnia is a country with of, of three religions, and that is where if you're talking about religion. Uh, Bosnia is, is is an interesting case because it's um, uh, it, it has uh, uh, Catholic, uh, uh, Orthodox, 
and, and muscle. So, so there's, there's significant uh, uh, segments of, of each of those in, in, in that country. Um, uh, let's see, that was page. I want to go to, yeah, let's, oh yeah, so this is it's a little bit more about what these countries are. You, you mentioned like Lithuania, these are, I, the, you, I, you meant like, these are interesting because they are, uh, uh, I would suspect that these, especially, especially something like this, that's probably like Estonia, you know, this has got to be uh, Estonia, Latvia, you know, um, the, the, Bal the, the, the Baltic countries. Uh, there, um, Poland's got to be somewhere here. Poland is somewhere here. Um, Hungary, Hungary certainly is is somewhere here. Hungary's in that group. Uh, you mentioned Bulgaria. Um, the other one last thing that I point that I wanted to make, and I, I think in terms of um, yeah, we're got just one more minute. Um, I think your next one of the, the 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 steps is to get a historical perspective, more of a historical perspective uh, on this. I think that would be very uh, very helpful to give a little bit more of a of, of a flavor. Um, that I think what you've done is fine. This is this is a, is a very good uh, uh, first uh, uh, first step. Um, but I would recommend that among the things you'd want to look at would be uh, to um, uh, to to think about uh, think about a little bit more of, of the historical. We you'd want to go and begin to look at, at the history that what's that that helps to uh, create these uh, uh, these things. Mm -hmm. um, and the other thing is is that as I noted, for example, with Africa, uh, you know, countries like that, they might be slight. That might suggest that as they economically develop, that they'll be sliding up that. That trend line that they'll be moving up that trend line uh, as uh, uh, so that's an interesting question can, is that can you use this to forecast uh, uh, movement over uh, uh, over time uh, as as these countries develop so thank you uh, any other any other questions okay um, so well thank you uh, Anika very much um, uh, well done thank you.